Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here on this Tuesday morning. We've got a great show lined up. We'll get started with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. Our principal Mike Heppenstall. Mike came out of the house the other day. He and his son went kayaking and had a great time. And We'll show you some pictures later, so run by and check it out there. Now, to, today it's going to be 82, high, low by 61, that same you know, uh, early spring uh, temperature is giving away to a warmer temperature now. Uh, water temperature is 71, and that's been really good because uh, it's, I'm going to talk a little bit later about cobia, but the cobia folks are red hot. It has been one of the best cobia seasons in many, many years. Take a look at our river readings, the Apalachicola freshwater folks. I taught a lot of freshwater folks this past weekend. And they were pleased. Uh, Appalachia Gold Bunch down right at eight foot. They got a slow drop on it. The chocolate hatchet at Caraville, it's leveling off. It's reading a 5.8. And it's staying pretty steady for the rest of this week. And we'll see what this rain does. Got rain off and on this week. But today just uh, uh, partly cloudy today. And, uh, and a marine forecast now south southeast at five to 10. So not a bad day to be on the water. Let's take a look at our, our uh, tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Cemeteries when carrying counts. It is a really good situation now. We have good strong tides. We're talking about a high tide at 105, about right in the middle of the day. 105, and it's got a good drop. And that's the last, that's April the 30th now, last day of April. It's gonna be uh, low right around midnight tonight. So we got a good drop, good incoming tide this morning, outgoing tide this afternoon. So whatever you like to fish, be a good day to fish your tidal systems, okay? <coughs> First break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Let's jump on some pictures and some emails. Y'all send a lot of stuff in. I appreciate it. We're going to share with all our viewers. Let's start off with a viewer from the Funiac Springs and a cute little picture here. This is Cheyenne. He said, hey, Mr. Chester, my name is Cheyenne. I'm 16 years old, and I love to fish, hunt, and anything outdoors. Uh, last Wednesday, me, my dad, and my boyfriend, and his dad went to Juniper Lake in the Funiac Springs, and my boyfriend's dad and I were having a little friendly competition, and he had caught the biggest fish the last time, but this time, I had one. The bass was 19 and a quarter inches and weighed four and a half pounds. She wasn't the biggest, but she definitely put a smile on my face. I love your show, Mr. Chester. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Cheyenne, for sending that. And we're going to, uh, i tell you what, this summer, I was just telling Jeff, this summer we're going to put something together. I'm going to try to visit some of our towns in the outer areas like the Phoenix Springs, Bluntstown, uh, uh, Weewall, and, and different places, Freeport. And maybe this summer have lunch or like on a Wednesday or something at a restaurant up there and take off some decals and all and visit some of you folks. So later on, uh, we'll, we'll try to get together. And that's sort of been a brainstorm of mine recently. All right, now, let's take a look at a couple more pictures. I was telling you the cobia season has been red hot. Folks, this is, this is really something right here. Uh, the cobia has been sent in, okay? This, this first picture here, we have, uh, this would be John Labenthal and, and Justin Cooley. Uh, they caught four. They kept two, they kept a 40 pounder and a 50 pounder right there. Good job there, they released a 20 pounder and a five pounder. All right, then uh, Howard Farrah, his group went out, they just caught a, bunt, a boatload of cobia right there. Okay, Justin Leak, this is, Justin got him in his cooler right there, that long cooler right there. Good job, Justin. I've, this has just been a fantastic, look at this one. This is just all this past weekend now. This is not you know weeks ago, this is just recent, last couple of days. Andy Brimer. Good job there, Andy. That is a, I believe that's, I want to say that's an 80 pounder. Yep, that's an 80 pounder right there. Now I'm going to show this next picture. This is, you know, I get a lot of pictures of sunsets and all, and I appreciate all of them seeing them. Every now and then one of them sort of stands out to me. This is Deb Paramore. This is Ken Paramore's wife, and she, uh, I've seen some of her pictures. She is a very good outdoor photographer, and uh, she's taken some great pictures in the woods and all. But look at this sunset. This this was one day last one afternoon last week. It's just a gorgeous sunset. But the color to capture all that, I cannot do that. Some people just have a special gift to do it, and I believe Deb has that gift. A great great picture there, Deb. Okay, this is my buddy Tony Bass from Valdosta. You know they're catching the grouper. He he and his buddies came down, and I didn't get to go this time. I was pompano fishing. This is, this was Saturday, and uh, they caught a, a nice mess of grouper. That's his first grouper of the season. Uh, off Carabell there, and they're not in deep, very deep water at all, but good job, Tony Bass. Hey, I told him, I emailed him back, I said, it must have been that lucky T-shirt you had on. Okay? All right, 
Here's Haley with a, uh, how about a speck of trout? I've heard some really nice speck of trout caught this past weekend. This is a nice one there. Good job, Haley. All right, here's some of the boys here uh, catching. This is, uh, let's see, this would be Derek Darby, Ryan. Let's see, this is just a group of them here. I've got, I'm getting so many pictures. This is Derek Darby right here uh, and uh, Ryan Huggins. Good job there, guys. They're just a bunch of them. I, okay, this right here, I just think this is good. Kids don't remember their best day of watching television, but they do remember their good days of fishing. Take a kid fishing, okay? Results of the Ling Ding Tournament, 67 pounds were won it, 37 pounds were second. The floor days, that's Mitch Coleman right there in first place. This was the final results, 41 pounds. Uh, each weekend, that was a high. So second place was caught this past weekend. Spanish mackerel at the bottom, the biggest one was 2.9 pounds, and then uh, the uh, amberjack was 71 pounders. So that's the Ling Ding Tournament at Mexico Beach is wrapped up, and there are the results, okay? Uh, Great bass fisher, Emily McCormick and Mickey McCormick, catching some bass this past weekend. What a pretty smile, Emily. All right, uh, that's a big, this is a big one that won the, the Ling Ding Tournament, uh, six or seven pounds. Caught it the first weekend and held on for first place. And all uh, right, here's another one. Uh, Ashton Lewis caught this Sunday afternoon, 62 pounds. Good job, Ashton. And then a mess of speckled perch. And uh, tonight, if you want to go out to the Gulf Coast, uh, uh, beekeeping, how to uh, beekeeping a uh, little thing by the resource management area. Okay, that takes care of the whole segment right there. All those announcements and pictures, we appreciate y'all sending them in to us and uh, hope you enjoyed them. Now, let's get ready. We've got a video coming up this past Saturday. Uh, we're at the Cape. I had a chance to do my first Pompano fishing trip. I've been raring to go and uh, wasn't anybody down there. And Gail and I just had a great time. And uh, I'm gonna, uh, got a little video, then come back at the video and wrap things up. It's been a great, uh, yeah, Pompano season here, and uh, there have been some good catches, and I hope you enjoy this. We'll uh, show you uh, where we went and how we did it. And uh, so let's, uh, I'm going to go to this commercial break, and we'll come back with a Pompano fishing trip. It's a double header, a catfish and a popping out. You can have the catfish and I'll take the popping out. Cape Sandblast. 
This one bigger than the other one. Yeah, what did I tell you? What, about five minutes ago? I was gonna hit the fish in there. Uh, and I have not had, we just moved, and I have not had time to set up all the rods. And I said, keep an eye on that one, because I threw this in a honey hole. Now, I'm gonna show y'all later on, I'm gonna diagram what, what I did after I get this fish off. Guess what, for supper tonight. That's supper tonight. Imagine that thing ten times bigger. What do you think the dog is? Let's get the dog is tired of it. Okay. Alright, we're gonna let it go. It just is hooked too. I barely got him hooked. See what the hook is? Barely. Right, as I was saying, look, this one barely hooked. He's not hooked in the mouth, okay? He's hooked in a little sliver of skin right there. It's a wonder. But that's tough skin. But it's out now. It just popped out. If I'd have played him too long now, he would have popped out. All right. Okay. Here's a Panhandle Outdoors tip. Now I do a lot of surf fishing in the springtime and, and uh, your rod and reel takes a big a beating in that salt water. So you always wash it off really good, the eyes and everything, okay? Wash it off really good. I just light spray. I don't go real hard, it's just a spray, okay? And it handles and off. And then what I want, uh, the big tip, uh, I want to show you what I, what I do. The, the tip, all y'all know about washing off, but I want to uh, show you, I hang my rods upside down. Watch this, look at this reel now, okay? If I dump it upside down, look at all, you see all the water coming out of it? Okay, so what I do, I put them over here and let them dry out, okay? Let them dry out, because the rest of the time, you know, they're gonna be stored vertical that way, so I always keep them 
hanging down that drain out for a couple of hours and later on this afternoon I'll come in here and then I'll, I'll hang them up in the room in there. So that's just a tip from Panhandle Outdoors on cleaning your surf rods. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. I ended up with three. I, I lost one. I caught a shark and a catfish and a bunch of other junk. But uh, listen, the way, the way I do things now, I'm gonna, I had some leftover shrimp. So I buy a large shrimp. So whatever shrimp I don't use, I'll eat. Seriously. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take uh, one pompano and eat pompano and shrimp tonight on the grill. Then tomorrow night, I'm gonna eat the other two pompano. That sound good? All right, for Pan Outdoors and Winston Chester, thank you for watching the show. Right, welcome back. Hope you enjoy. That's a lot of fun. And uh, let's look at the uh, fish and game forecast because I caught those pompano right in the middle of that fish and game forecast Saturday morning. Now we're looking at uh, our times today. This is brought to us by Mark Cowart, Edgewater Beach Realty, 832-6000. And uh, run, uh, run, give Mark a call and anytime. Mark's a good fisherman in his own right and a good person. So we're glad to have him as a sponsor. Our time's 5.04 a.m. to 7.04 Excellent time right there, and then this afternoon, 5.33 to 7.33, and these times, these times are fitting right in. You know, we talk about uh, fishing and all here in the Panhandle, and we're almost, always bragging about what's going on with the Panhandle, and, and uh, the, the big thing is the variety of, you stop and think. You remember two weeks ago, I did a show catching, uh, well, I caught those flounder, I, don't even think, I did a little show catching those flounder, okay? Last week, we did a show on, on catching the redfish, we caught about 40 redfish, and now you just had that one on pompanoes. That's three weeks in a row, three different species caught right here, you know, in, right here in our backyard. And I, it's, I've got a little challenge. I, I challenge myself a lot of times. I want to, this weekend, I, I'm going to try to catch a different species. I'm not sure. It might be a speckled trout or, or uh, I'm not sure, or king or something or Spanish. That, it's one of those three probably. And then, uh, then I got to jump on freshwater. But isn't that wonderful to live in a place like this and be able to do that every Saturday, weather permitting? I just, I, I thank God for it every time I get a chance. Okay, listen, a couple of announcements here. Took, uh, take a look at this announcement right here. This is uh, this weekend, now May 4th, over White City, Franklin County High School Project Graduation. They're, they're giving a, uh, this money goes to Project Graduation. It has a big bass tournament down there, uh, $2,500 first place. That's not, I may do that this weekend. But uh, anyway, it goes to a great cause at Project Graduation. And fishermen and outdoorsmen will be contributing to that cause. And uh, so be aware of that. Now, this next one is two weeks away, but I want to give you a little bit of a notice on it. It's over in our, our western viewing area over Walton County, over in Freeport. We've got some good viewers over in the Freeport area. Uh, uh, Trey Nick over at Nick's Restaurant. Trey started this a while back. I remember when it started about seven or eight years ago. Well, eight years ago, because this is number eight. This is a uh, Nick's Redfish Roundup. That's the restaurant there. I know y'all have eaten that restaurant. You've been on on the other side of Freeport, great fresh seafood, uh, one of the best, best restaurants in the whole panhandle, especially over on that side. That it, I'm going to talk more about it, but this is a great opportunity to go ahead and, uh, and plan it. Uh, it's it's going to be a one-day redfish tournament, and you can fish Choctatchee Bay, you can run the canal, fish over here. So I'm going to try to uh, cover that. I'm going to try to get a hold of Trey. They're good outdoorsmen over there in that Freeport area. So well, we just want to tell you that's two weeks away. And uh, might want to look at that, $5,000 first place, okay? Now, uh, a couple of other things, too. The, uh, on the video, if you notice, I was able to catch those fish in just a short period of time. I lost a real nice, uh, nice one uh, before uh, Gail got the camera out. But uh, 
it's an excellent time of year to go to go fishing and, and to surf. And I'm gonna one of the things I looked for some sand fleas and I couldn't find any. But I didn't look really hard, but uh, I know the people on West End of the Beach were catching sand fleas, but I'm not having much luck at, at catching sand fleas. So, so anyway, uh, if you can catch sand fleas, that's the number one bait. But what I ended up using, I just stopped by a shrimp place over there, Limbus's place over there by. I press nails and I, I just buy fresh shrimp and ironically like I say if I uh, I buy large shrimp so if I don't use them all them for bait we'll just cook them that night <laughs> you'll appreciate this out of three flounder we got actually got three meals just it was just Gail and I usually have a lot of company but this past weekend just us so we had eight meal Sunday night uh, Saturday night Sunday night I had one left over so I'm probably eating a fish sandwich uh, uh, well I had a fish sandwich last night but I'm probably gonna uh, have enough for for three meals so anyway uh, and that's going to lead us to my next guest tomorrow is going to be Chris Paxton from the FWC. Chris will be here. We'll be talking about the, the trophy catch bass uh, championship they have set up over in Tallahassee for all of the bass fishermen. He's also going to talk about that fish kill they had over Lake Victor. Oh, what, a, what a small tragedy that is to uh, talk about maybe what caused it. may not know yet what caused it, but he'll be here. We're also going to talk about ethics and all uh, for fishermen. Uh, you know, should we... Well, you know, this is springtime, and the brim and, brim and shell crack are getting on the bed, and, and they're, you know, they're just piling up, and people are catching. I had a guy call me Sunday. He talked to some people at a church, and, and uh, there were 20, they told them there were 28 boats on one brim bed in Lake Wimico, 28 boats on one, one shell cracker bed. And, and you just imagine, uh, you know, should you catch that many uh, fish off the bed? I mean, if you catch, if your boat catches 100, and what, uh, what, that's 2,800 uh, brim and shell cracker being caught. So uh, do, do we need to do that in one day? Do we need to do that ethically? No, we don't. And we'll have Chris talking about the, the impact it makes on, on the area. We, we just need to catch the fish we're going to eat. That's why I just mentioned about what we did with the pompano. We just ate those and had a couple of good meals off of it. Got to run out of time, folks. Uh, you do something good for somebody today. Thank you so much for, for viewing on the show, and we uh, hope you enjoyed that video. And make sure you do something good. God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.